Well, I haven't done one of these in a while, but welcome back to another epic book review. All right. Well, welcome back to the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm doing an epic book review, and I, I always try to think about how to do something that maybe other, you know, people in the education space are not necessarily doing, and how it connects to education. And, and what I mean by that, I'm trying to really kind of look at books that, books outside of education and their connection to what we do for teaching and learning every single day. And I, I actually, when I first read this book that I'm gonna share today, and it's actually titled Perennial Seller, The Art of Making and Marketing Work That Last by Ryan Holiday, who if you know Ryan Holiday, uh, he does the, uh, he's, I think he's the author of The Daily Stoic, the, the blog, but he also does a lot of stuff uh, with stoicism. And I actually had no intention of, first of all, doing a, a, an epic book review. <laughs> And so I didn't have an intention of doing that, but um, the reason I picked up this book was I was interested in the thinking behind it and the implications for um, my new release that's coming out uh, titled What Makes a Great Principal, which I not only wrote with Allison Apsey, but 15 amazing contributors who share their insights and stories about what makes a great principal. And in that book, we talk about five pillars and why they're so crucial to principalship and those to aspiring to a, a principalship. And then what we do, and I think it's such a beautiful idea is Allison does such a great job of, I tell stories kind of, you know, setting this stage. Allison did the research on why those uh, pillars really, really matter, matter. But what we did is we asked not only uh, a few principals about their experiences, but we asked the people that principal serve, teachers, students, to share their stories and how their principles made pillar, uh, you know, met the, the standards of those pillars that we shared. So it's a really kind of unique book because a lot of times when we hear leadership books, it's from people that maybe stepped away from leadership. And of course, you know, that's, that's a little bit of me, you know, from administration. But I think the, the difference is connecting with um, those that they serve because we always say like, oh, we want to hear from those we serve. And then there's not really that much out there. Um, with that kind of thinking. So I wanted to, uh, Alice and I uh, created this book together and I'm so excited it's coming out really soon. And so I wanted to check out this book, Perennial Seller uh, by Ryan Holiday. And as I was reading it, one of the things that I found really, really interesting is I, I, didn't, I didn't write about, I, I, I wrote this in What Makes a Great Principle. I'm just kind of going from memory. And it was really tied to what uh, Holiday talks about. So in the book, uh, What Makes a Great Principal, which is coming out soon, just keep an eye out for it. And I'll, there'll be more information coming out as we go. And we're going to actually have uh, authors and contributors on this podcast. But I wrote about the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which I actually did a book review here because it's probably one of my favorite books ever. And I talked about, I read that less than a decade ago. And it was so amazing. It was such an incredible book by Dale Carnegie. And I felt the ideas in it were just so impactful to everything that we're going through right now. And so I knew it was kind of older, like an older book. And then I went to look about when it was released and it was in the 1930s. And I'm thinking, so in the 2010s, you have this book that's so relevant to today, but is actually um, was written in the 1930s, which I thought was amazing. And when I wrote Innovator's Mindset and when we work with our authors at Impress, we actually really kind of get them to focus on, don't focus on tools, don't focus on trends, focus on what will be relevant 15, 20, 30 years from now. And that's really kind of the, the premise of Holiday's book is how do you create something that's not only unique in nature, but also timeless. And as I'm reading the book and I'm looking at some of the quotes that are uh, I'm going to talk about today, the thinking I had is how do you make learning timeless that the experience that students have in school and not only students, but the adults have in school is something that resonates with them long after their time in education. And I'll, I'll share a few quotes and I, I picked a few quotes and I'm going to tell you, I, I, I read them before and I'm going to have some trouble 
saying some of the words, but <laughs> I know they mean I just, you know, I have trouble reading them. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I do want to uh, do a little quick summary about the book as provided by ChatGPT. And I, I like modeling that. I like to say like, hey, how did I use artificial intelligence to uh, make this connection? And, and then actually share that, but then t have my own takes because Holiday is not talking about how this applies to education. That's my own take. And one of the things I really thought about in this book is all of the AI stuff that's going on right now. And it's, it's all, it's so tools focused. And there's a little part of it that I'm really struggling with in the sense that I feel we're almost pushing people to embrace technology over humanity, that we're using this to become less human than more human. And that's not the way that I want to utilize technology. How do we actually use these things to create meaningful connections, to embrace and, and emphasize our humanity? And so I was really kind of thinking about that because that should never go away. And if it does go away, we're in trouble. So what I'm trying to do is take my experiences and the people I connect with and make something relevant for them, even though this book was not written for educators. And ChatGPT can't necessarily do that or any artificial intelligence, and probably it could. But I think what makes it unique is these are my perspectives. And that's what I want to share to you today. But here's the little summary. And I asked to do this, I just asked for a five uh, tweet summary. And I just, you know, and, and, and this is what it is to kind of, you know, brief into the point. So here is the summary by ChatGPT. Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday is a blueprint for creating timeless work in a world of fleeting trends. <laughs> right there, very, very relevant to education, right? Because a lot of the stuff in education, it's, it is fleeting. And we just go on to the next thing. Anyways. It emphasizes craftsmanship, quality, and enduring value over quick fixes and overnight success. So relevant to education. Holiday, Holiday argues that key, the key to creating a perennial seller lies in understanding the principles of great artistry and business. It's about honing your skills, understanding your audience deeply, and consistently delivering exceptional work. The book dives into the importance of positioning your work effectively, building a platform, and cultivating a loyal fan base. Holiday stresses the need for patience and persistence in the pursuit of long-term success. Through insightful anecdotes and case studies, Perennial Seller illustrates how timeless works are often the result of relentless dedication, strategic marketing, and a commitment to excellence. Overall, Perennial Sellers offers invaluable insights for creators and entrepreneurs seeking to create enduring impact and leave a lasting legacy in their respective fields. It's a must read for anyone strive for sustained success in a fast paced world. And take the last sentence and you say, offers invaluable insights for creators and entrepreneurs seeking to create enduring impact and leaving a lasting legacy in their respective fields. So just swap words out here. Uh, how can we offer invaluable insights for educators who are seeking to create enduring impact and leave a lasting legacy in the field of education. There's so much to connect here. So there's the quick summary. And I want to show, share a few quotes and some of my takeaways. Um, and I guess my own connections to, uh, to, to, to this book. So I'll start with this one uh, from Holiday. With a perennial seller as your goal, the track is clear. Lasting impact and relevance. So I think once I read that quote, that's when I started saying, oh, there's a lot to learn here for education. I can't remember when it is in the book, but it just, it, it just kind of hit me. And then when I actually um, saw that quote, I looked at it and I, I, I thought about this and just swapping a, a word for this. So with a perennial, with perennial learning as your goal, the track is clear lasting impact and relevance. So it's asking the question in education, the things that we're doing today, and this has been a big focus for me. When we talk about 10 year plans, we're often trying to predict the future. And what I've challenged in the past is that the most important 10 year plan we can focus on is what are we doing today and how will it impact our students 10 years from now? How do we put our students in a situation that no matter what comes their way, because AI is groundbreaking. It's going to be such a disruption. It's going to be way more than social media. It's going to be more equivalent to probably the printing press or the internet. 
and will something like that come again? And how are we dealing with it now? And so the hope is that in education is that we teach our students and ourselves that no matter what comes our way, we'll actually be able to deal with it. That's the most important thing you can do because what are you doing today that can that will actually make an impact 10 years from now? So again, switching perennial seller with perennial learning as your goal. The track is clear, lasting impact and relevance. All right, so quote number two. <laughs> I'm gonna struggle with this one. All right, there's a great exchange involving the philosopher Epictetus that encapsulates my approach to thinking about marketing. Tell me what to do, the student says. Epictetus corrects him. It would be better to say, make my mind adaptable to any circumstances. So it's actually quite amazing because I just talked about this. You know, when I talked about the idea of perennial learning versus perennial seller, it is actually how, um, how basically we teach students to, and I, I shouldn't say students, learners. I, I, I like to focus learners because then it, it encompasses everybody within our organizations that no matter what happens, that your mind will become adaptable to circumstances. So even though that's a goal, and that's what I just talked about. It's like, why am I talking about this again? That's not why I, taught, I wanted to bring it up. When I read this quote, I, I, I thought, I've been saying this forever. But do you know who's been really saying it forever? Epictetes, who is like basically zero AD. And the reason I share this with you is it made me realize that so much of what we share as our wisdom and our new thinking, it's been forever. That there's so much that we're trying to do today that has kind of been done in the past and just kind of reshared and thinking like this. So I just started thinking about that is like how much wisdom are we ignoring from the past that would actually help us deal with the future? And a quick little side story. I remember thinking about... Um, <laughs> really challenging and how we can change education for the better our students. And this is, I think I was a vice principal principal and I was at a conference and I think I'm about 31, 32 years old and 48 years old now. And I remember seeing, sitting with a gentleman and he was probably in his seventies and we were really talking about like, how do we change education for the better? How do we really kind of adapt to our learners? And you could just kind of see he was tired. And when I, what I mean by that, is he looked at me and he said, we've been talking about this like when I was your age. And it was like kind of like a, a numbing moment because a lot of times we think in education right now, we're the ones who are advocating for change, but this has been advocated forever. And so instead of thinking, are we just kind of repeating the same advocacy that people before us were advocating? Because if we are, then that tells you something. So instead of thinking about, are we the first generation to call for this change? I, I want people to think about, are we actually the, the first generation to create it? Because that's a lot harder work. And how do we do that? So I just, I remember just thinking that and almost feeling as I talked to that gentleman, discouraged a little bit, like, oh, is this like, am I going to be doing the same thing? And I would actually say in many ways, and I know there's a lot of issues in education right now, but in a lot of ways, things are a lot better than... Um, what they used to be in our view of learning, not necessarily what's how things are going in schools, I guess, you know, kind of that, but more and more people are saying, you know, really advocating for something different. And I felt it was a little bit fewer and far between, but now it's more and more people saying like, Hey, something's broken here. We need to get better. And I just hope we're not 30, 40 years from now having the same conversations that we've done something different. So is that hopeful? Probably, but it's, what are we going to do to make that happen? All right, so the last one. Again, I'm going to have a little pronunciation issue here. So Holiday says this. It's better to play the long game. Leave behind the hype and the eph ephemeral infatuations for the time capsule and the one-hit wonders. And again, these all are connected. <laughs> when we think about what we're doing in education right now, there's a lot of things that are kind of buzzwords. And when I say a buzzword, I don't mean a word that's used continuously in education. 
I mean a word that's continuously used in education, but we're not defining it or clearly articulating what it means. So for example, I've been talking about this for a while. People would always say, let's take risks. We need to take risks. And when you hear the term risk, a lot of people insinuate something dangerous, right? So I actually pulled back and I said, um, okay, what does risk taking even mean? Like, what does that mean? And I defined it. And I said, risk taking is simply this, moving from a comfortable average in pursuit of an unknown better. So it's not saying that what you're doing right now is bad, but it's saying that maybe what we're doing right now isn't as working as well as it could. Are we willing to try something new to, to you know, attain something better than before? And whether you agree with that notion or not, at least I was able to clearly articulate what I meant by that. So whatever terms you're using in education, I want you to really think about when you, if I ask you this question, if you say like, hey, you keep saying a word over and over again, I will say to you, what do you mean by that? And explain that to me and actually define it and what will it do years from now? And if you, if you can't do that, if you can't clearly articulate what you mean by that, then you might have a one hit wonder. Then you might have a thing that's just gonna go on to the next thing. And so I think that there's so much change in education. There's so many new things that are being thrown our way that the best way to deal with it is to kind of say, what is timeless? What is crucial? What are things that 30, 40, 50, 100 years from now will still be relevant and make sure we know those things so that we have some consistency and routine to actually be able to deal with change. And I think a lot of times when we think of change, it's constantly changing ourselves, constantly doing different things, but I think we can do that, but also we have to have some structure and some routine built into that. And when I read this book, it really reminded me of that. So, you know, with all the AI stuff, you know, it's gonna be really important 100 years from now, humanity. And if it's not important 100 years from now, we've done something wrong. So I think we have to, think about those things and have more of those conversations. And so I actually thought a lot about what's timeless in education and what lasts forever. The same way I thought about Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, the same way Allison and I really kind of focused on, we're not trying to catch on to trends. We're also trying to just to define like, what, what are the pillars that really matter for what makes a great principle? And will these things be relevant, you know, like 50 years from now. And I'll give you an example. Um, one of them is talent cultivator. When would that ever not be important? Another one is resource maximizer. When would that ever be important? And your resources might change and your access might change, but to get the most of them, timeless. So that's something that we thought about. And even though this book is really kind of like, how do we get great ideas out there? How do we great make something that, you know, last? the same applies to learning. So I thought it was really interesting. I hope that you got something out of this. I would, you know, I don't do book reviews uh, for books I don't like reading, to be honest with you. So uh, 10 thumbs up, I guess. I don't know, whatever. But I hope you enjoyed this. But uh, thank you. And if there's, if you want me to do more book reviews, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I think it's, um, it's really helpful to me when I hear from you, like maybe what resonated with you, what's something you took away from this. I'd love to hear from you because I don't want this to be just me talking to you, you listening, you walk away. How do we have a conversation? How do we use these spaces to connect with one another? Not just to kind of like pretend we're on the other side of the screen, but there's no humans here. So just some thinking I had. Anyways, thanks for being back for Epic Book Review. <laughs> gotta play the whole song, gotta play the whole song. I love it. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you do. Take care.